he's out there. Hi, welcome back. Today is the day. It is finally here. Ah, today we're watching Black Christmas from 2006. This has a 4.6 on IMDb. I have never seen this film before. If you did not know, my main prerequisite for my 13 Days of Horror is that I haven't seen any of these films before. I like to sit down and talk about films I've never seen before and react to them. Uh, and this one, I don't know why or how, but I never saw it. And I think it was a blessing in disguise. I've heard awful things about this film. And when I did my review for the new Black Christmas, uh, <laughs> I had a couple of comments on there. Well, actually, yeah, a handful of comments on there talking about this one. And people say it's bad in an amazing way. I think the score probably reflects that. This is the lowest scoring film for the 13 Days of Horror and I threw it in here because I get asked a lot about my thoughts on it. So I thought, you know what? It's been requested by Patrick. Why not sit down and actually watch it and include it in this month just for fun? I guess the fun part is questionable. The film is directed by Glenn Morgan who directed the remake of Willard or Willard. Uh, and he actually said because of the box office failure of Willard, uh, when this one came out, if it was a flop, he would never direct again. And guess what? It was a flop and he has never directed again, apart from a couple of episodes of X-Files, like the newer season. He ain't doing it again. <laughs> Obviously, this is a remake of the 1974 classic, Canadian classic slasher um, about some women who are in a house and are being stalked. And it's the phone call movie. It's the movie with the terrifying phone call and the terrifying attic scene. There's so many cool aspects in the original that did not translate to the recent remake and I'm thinking probably did not translate to this one. Surprisingly, this film was really hard to find. Uh, I couldn't track it down on Amazon Prime even though it's available in most countries. I have to buy it on YouTube with my VPN. It's gonna cost me $10 to buy it instead of renting it which I'm so glad because I'm sure I'm gonna watch it every single weekend. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Black Christmas. 2006. <gasps> He's out there. Oh my God. I've never seen so much bullshit packed into a film. <laughs> At one point of watching this, no joke, I checked how long in I was. I thought maybe I had 20 minutes left. It had only been 30 minutes. I still had a full Hour. The movie is, as the original, based in a sorority house where a slashing takes place. And, uh, you know, it's meant to be like a murder mystery. Someone is killing off the women one by one and they have to figure out who. And in this one, funny enough, the house mom, um, Mrs. Mack, who's the drunk in the original, which we love, uh, is played by Phyllis from the original. And apart from that, <laughs> it kind of butchers the original film. But in saying that, I did look this up and uh, the new director intended to change the original plotline. He wanted to make sure that the remake was still Black Christmas, but explored new subplots that had not been fleshed out in the original film. It says he also had the blessing from the original director. I mean, no one thought it was gonna turn out like this. The sad thing is there was a lot of studio intervention and it was meant to end with a very ambiguous yet callback to the original film, but none other than Bob and Harvey Weinstein put their foot down and pretty much changed the ending of this film with Bob Weinstein insisting they did the clusterfuck of an ending, which they did. So there's nothing that the Harveys can't ruin at this point. The thing about this film is I'm not too sure if it is a remake or just a sequel where they change different parts of the original, but they change his whole background and really give flashbacks and uh, they based it on Edmund Kemper, who is a serial killer. Um, so this is 
kind of like serial killer fan fiction weirdness that kind of crossed over to a classic horror film. And I mean, I don't love slashes, but I really like the original Black Christmas and it's so tainted. <laughs> uh, like you had to laugh in this film. It seems so campy as well. The girls were such idiots. No one was likable in this whole film. Um, and they had such weird one-liners. It was bizarre from the start to the end, including making the villain have glowing skin. You heard me. There were so many little inconsistencies in the film and so many far-fetched plot lines that you just had to laugh and go along with it. A fun fact for you guys that will probably be asking me if I liked this more than uh, the recent remake. Uh, no, <laughs> I did not, believe it or not. But although this was a box office flop, it actually grossed three million more than the 2019 remake, even though that remake cost less to make which it does not look like. It actually cost $4 million less. What? How much nonsense can you fit in one film? I raise you Black Christmas 2006. <laughs> I mean, I'm not mad I watched it. I'm glad I watched it. I, at one point, as I said, I had to throw everything out the window and just enjoy it for what it was because it was utterly garbage. It was garbage, I'm sorry, it's really bad. But probably the worst thing about this film in my eyes You'll never guess. <laughs> it's the title. What the heck? Who phoned it in <laughs> and did this on MS Paint in 20 minutes? They also kept the same font through all of the flashbacks, uh, titling what year it was taking place. And I just can't believe someone would do that to a horror title. It's just disrespectful at this point. <laughs> I'm gonna give this film a three out of 10. It was atrocious. <laughs> scare score, I'm gonna give it a six. There were some jump scares. Um, it was cheesy as all hell, but there was definitely some jump scares and a lot of gore and blood. Um, and originality, I'm gonna give it a four. Yeah, it ain't it, sis. Okay, let's head over to the genre board and the bullseye. <laughs> okay, we're back at the genre map for Black Christmas. Um, I would say this one is basically just killer. I mean, do we have any disputes? Anyone want to tell me otherwise? I think we just put this one... I mean, Gore, yeah, okay. Maybe we just put him under here. So, <laughs> there you go. Black Christmas, you get a spot right in the middle. <laughs> Let's go down to the bullseye, though. Hi, guys. I think we've got a Black Christmas fan. He's refusing to <laughs> get out of the way. Come on, Gromit. You need to... <laughs> go on. Go out there. Go on. <laughs> He's refusing to let me put it on the bullseye. <laughs> okay, if you haven't seen the bullseye before, this is it. It's based on intent. The film intended to be a success, but it was a flop. Um, <laughs> I think that we all know this missed the mark as a remake, which none of these other films are remakes. So we, I mean, they have an advantage being an original film. So it's a little bit different, but this one, we know what the intent was. The intent is to reimagine <laughs> this film with a backstory to the killer that was hopefully successful and did it justice, but unfortunately it did not. So for that, we're just gonna put it on the outside of the bullseye. Bullseye. Some people th might think it doesn't even belong on the bullseye, but I'm gonna be generous today and I'm actually just gonna put him down here. <laughs> He's still all by himself. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you haven't watched any of my other 13 Days of Horror, please check them out and support me so I know whether to do this again next year. I hope you're having a great day. Thanks, Gromit. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another 13 Days of Horror. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.